Good evening, and thank you for joining another Northshire Presents virtual event. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Rachel Person, event manager for Northshire Bookstore in Saratoga Springs, New York, here with my good friend and colleague, Davith Wood, event manager for Northshire Bookstore in Manchester Center, Vermont. Thank you so much for joining us for tonight's Bookseller Book Chat. Um, before we get started, a couple of very quick notes. First of all, thank you for your incredible loyalty and support of Northshire Bookstore. Um, we would not be here to be able to offer great events like this one without that support. So we thank you very much for your ongoing patronage of the bookstores. Um, second of all, uh, the titles being recommended tonight are all in a blog post on our website um, that was in the emails that you got confirming this event, but also Davith has just posted it in the chat box so you can um, follow along there. David has a couple of more announcements for you, and I'm going to turn my camera off so that I can transition to Maeve, a wonderful bookseller from here in the Saratoga store, who's going to be speaking with you. So I'm going to disappear, and David will tell you some more things about stuff coming up at Northshire. Thanks, Rachel. Uh, well, we've got a special event here uh, tonight, especially sort of a different special one. Um, but before we get started, as we get Maeve set up uh, on that computer in Saratoga, I want to talk a little bit about Booktopia, which is our literary festival, actually our annual literary festival, always the first weekend of May. And it's so it's going to be May 5th and 6th of this year. It's just coming up. There's probably a lot of Booktopians already signed on to this that already know the story behind it. Um, but it's where authors and readers meet. Um, authors get a chance to sit with um, these readers. A hundred readers come from all over the, across the country. And it's a really intimate day where they get to chat about the books. Oftentimes, the Booktopians are able to read the books first, pre-ordering them from us. Um, and so they've already read the books. And so the conversation should be really special. Um, this year, we're going to have a, a great, we've got a great lineup of authors. Um, first off is Stephen Kiernan. He is coming back. He is a uh, Booktopia alum from times past. He was going to be at Booktopia in 2020, um, but that didn't work out, obviously. But uh, his new book is The Glass Chateau. Now, it doesn't come out yet. It won't be ready by Booktopia, but he will be returning as a host. He'll be running a trivia at the dinner and uh, talking about the Glass Chateau, and there'll be a special um, pre-order and personalization campaign um, for Booktopians. We'll also have Brenda Sh Cherry, a uh, debut author of a historical novel named uh, up called The East Indian, about the uh, the first Indian um, from the subcontinent uh, that come to this continent. Um, Annie Hartnett, a New Hampshire author, will be presenting Unlikely Animals, a uh, novel in paperback now. Um, Brianna Holt has her debut memoir and cultural critique in our shoes on being a young black woman and not so post-racial America. Uh, Amy Meyerson, one of Rachel's uh, favorite uh, current writers, uh, is gonna be presenting The Love Scribe, which is a, is a staff pick from her. Uh, Richard Mirabella will be presenting his debut novel, Brother and Sister Enter the Forest. And then a couple of uh, mystery writers to round us out. Nathan Oates presenting A Flaw in the Design, which is set in Vermont. And Sarah Strohmeyer, a Vermont uh, mystery writer, will be presenting We Love to Entertain, a thriller uh, about an HGTV series that uh, involves murder. Uh, and then finally, we also have our last author to round us out is Olivia Wolfgang Smith, who's a, a debut for her book, Glassworks, which we'll be able to, we've got a chance to sell early at Booktopia. But before any, I, I continue going on about that, uh, we've, I've got the great pleasure of hosting Maeve Noonan here. This is her first time joining us on the book chat, uh, but she has is a, is a long time Saratoga bookseller. I've known her for years and I love the type of things that she's recommending. So I've been really looking forward to it and uh, hearing what you have to, um, to suggest to us tonight, Maeve. Yeah, thank you. Look forward to seeing all of you. I'm going to start right away though, because I do have quite a stack. The first one, is Empress of the Nile by Lynn Olson. And it's technically a mem biography, sorry, of Christiane Descort Novocourt, who is not as well known as she should be. It is also a biography of an age, post-war mostly, but it starts in the 1930s and goes to the 1960s in Europe and also the Middle East. Um, Christiane was the youngest and first young female curator at the Louvre of Egyptian work, and she is an she was an archaeologist. She was involved in many things, including rescuing all the artifacts out of the Louvre during the Nazi occupation. 
She also saved many lives, but she was also involved. And I remember this as a small child, saving the temples of Dendra and Abu Simbel and all that when the Aswan Dam was built in the 60s. Finally, she was behind that. She is not well known. She really deserves to be a household name and she is not. I love this book. One of the best memoirs, but, sorry, biographies, biographies that I've read in a very long time. The next one is also a memoir biography. This one is strictly memoir. It's Fenton O'Toole's We Don't Know Ourselves. And it's a history of modern Ireland seemed through a very intimate perspective. Fenton grew up in Dublin. Um, he was a journalist. He has never left. He now resides both here in the States and Dublin. And it is amazing the intricacies in the way he weaves personal history with the history of modern Ireland. And I'm talking major things that you might know, of course, the troubles, the peace accords and all that, but the intimate way in which he weaves his own story through it is so fresh, so different and just beautifully done. He's a great connector. He connects the little things with the big things. One of my personal favorites, poet wise, and it, April is Poetry Month, is Joy Harjo. And this one is Weaving Suns, Sundown in a Scarlet Light. This is her favorites of the last 50 years of her work. And I love this book so much. I use it to actually go to sleep with. I will read one poem a night and I read them over and over. I've gone through the book twice now, I think. It's just elegant, surreally intimate, and it's her. It's Joy Harjo. There is a reason why she just won a major award again and was the past recipient of the um, Poet Laureate of the U.S. Sorry. Another one, since we're on that subject matter, is After Sappho by Selby Wynn Schwartz. This won the Man Booker Prize. It is an amazing vignette biographies of these really important women of the early 20th century, European, mostly Italian and English, everyone from Virginia Woolf and Colette and people you might know to lesser known ones in Italy, especially weaving together their lives and their art and each other. And it's really beautifully done. Um, it's magical the way Schwartz wove Sappho through this. Sappho is one of my favorite poets and, and that's why I picked it up, but it is so much more, but also her language, her use of language and the way she constructs this book is so unique. It definitely deserved to win. And yeah, I was on a little bit of a biography kick. You can tell. This is Nero, Matricide Music and Murder in Imperial Rome. Wonderful retelling by actually two authors, Anthony Everett, very famous, and Roddy Ashworth. Um, there is the old myth that Nero fiddled while Rome burnt. Well, he actually fiddles didn't exist, right? So he would have been a liar player. But what I love about however it worked this was it analyzed the psychology and the times in which Nero was seen through the people of his own age. So this is also a critique of, oh, Cassius Dio, Tacitus, and Seneca. Seneca is basically the thread that is woven through the book because Seneca was Nero's teacher, um, 
minister and ultimately one of his victims. And it doesn't lighten what Nero did, but it reanalyzes it in a more honest light, I would call it, it a more balanced light. And yet it has a great sense of humor about it too, oddly enough. But I think Nero would appreciate that with his love of Greek drama. On the classic vibe, I have Stone Blind by Natalie Haynes, one of my new favorite historical novelists. This one is the Perseid in the story of Perseus and Medusa from Medusa's point of view. And by the end of the book, you might wonder who was the real monster. What I love about this one is Haynes really does the wonderful job of reintroducing the Greek love of humor and pathos. And she really did a superlative job with that. It's a little lighter than Thousand Ships, her previous novel, but I loved it. Once again, it was a really nice breath of fresh air. Oh, this, a great epic. Epic for our times. And it's amazing. This is Jamie McGilvery by John Sales. <laughs> and it was amazing. Um, he read for us last week in which he did all the voices. And yes, he really does have a great Scots accent and English accent. But what I loved about this book was it takes you from the very end uh, or very end of the Battle of Culloden up through introducing the um, French and Indian War, we would call it. And it, it introduces you to the smaller people and the smaller lives, so-called, that made up what happened here in the colonies. Jamie is in the Battle of Culloden at the very end. He is transported to the colonies as an indentured servant or slave at that point because how many people actually lived past their seven years indenture was really unbelievably low. And what I loved what John Sales did, he introduced us to not just the politics of the colonial age, but also the politics of the Native American and the more in-depth and convoluted and really interesting politics that were going on with the uh, natives at that time period. Excellent book. And to round things out again, April is Poetry Month. I have American Wildflowers by Leanne Sh Shapton. Um, we can talk more of, or about the event that's coming up at SPAC. This is just a lovely book. It would make the perfect Mother's Day gift. The artwork is amazing. It is more than poetry. It is prose. It is natural um, nature studies. I would call them more narratives, prose, poetry, also a bit of um, botany. And it has a wide range of authors. And one of those authors is Saratoga Springs' very own poet laureate, Jim Bruchak. It is a wonderful, beautiful book. Absolutely exquisite. There are two books I wanted to mention. One coming out, um, actually both coming out May 2nd, is um, it, the first one is Firekeeper's Daughter. It's coming out in paperback. Um, it is available in hardcover. I don't have a copy here because we're sold out. It is one of my favorite young adult books. And it is by um, Angela Ambuli. And it is a fabulously done young adult book by a Native American. And it's about all of the politics and trials and travails of being a young woman coming of age in the current times, it is very current. It deals with drug abuse. It 
deals with politics within the culture against, you know, coming up against Native Americans versus um, the population that is there, which is right on the border of Canada and the US. And it is just an amazing amalgamation all wrapped around a mystery and a murder and a, a drug run chain. And what I loved about it was the strong women in it and how women support women. And that leads me into my last book, which is Warrior Girl on Earth, which is Angelina Bully's newest book coming out in May, May 2nd as well, I believe. And that is her follow-up and she is staying with the same family, the Firekeeper family. And this time it is two of the younger people. Um, once again, she really does a wonderful job with young adults. And th these are twins, Pauline and her sister, and all the stuff that happens around young women and how they're in the Native American tribe, but they're also trying to find themselves, find what they want to do and what they want to be, college, not college, Native American college, not. All wrapped up in this, though, is a mystery dealing with repatriation of artifacts and acculturation and also the great horror that is happening in our own world time of many Native American women missing. It is incredible the numbers of women who have gone missing and found dead of the Native American population. And this book honors that in such an amazing way. And Shabuli does this wonderful job of bringing it all together, wrapping it all up in a great story and also making you aware of what's going on. I love it and I can't wait to have it in hand in my bookstore. So I think that's all for me tonight. I hope you all have a great night. Thank you so much, May. That was great. Really appreciate it. And it was a great pleasure to see you again and have you on um, uh, the Bookseller Book Chat. Well, up next, we're going to do another thing that's a little bit different from normal uh, that we're excited about. I'm asked uh, uh, Stan Hines, our uh, adult book buyer in both locations, for that matter, and Kathy Taylor, our, one of our web processors, to both have a chat about the new Rebecca McKay novel, which they have both read and then written staff reviews of. I have some questions for you. Um, so I have some questions for you about, I have some questions for you. Guys, take it away. All right. Hi, everyone. Um, so we do have, I have some questions for you here by Rebecca Mackay. She was the Pulitzer Prize finalist for her previous novel, The Great Believers. Um, I So this book, um, which I actually listened to on audio um, and I couldn't stop listening to it. It begins with a woman who is traveling um, back to her New Hampshire boarding school after 20 years. Um, she lives in LA currently. Um, she is going there to teach a class on podcasting for their winter term. Um, while she's there, she begins uncovering um, new details about a murder that took place um, during her senior year at the boarding school. Uh, her roommate was um, found dead in the pool and a, a man had been arrested for the murder. Um, she begins to doubt whether that conviction um, should have happened and whether he actually committed that crime. So I think her plotting is excellent, um, really engaging. Again, I couldn't stop listening to it. Um, yeah. yeah, it's it's uh, mm -hmm. it's 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 great. It's it's, uh, it, the, it's yeah. The, the story the story, <laughs> the story uh, just propels you right along. You know, so many uh, she weaves in so many different um, elements, plots, subplots uh, that make it uh, really interesting. Um, and uh, when she goes back to when she goes back to uh, the school, it's been I think twenty five or so years uh, since she graduated um, to teach this 
I think she's teaching like a class in film studies and podcasting. And it's the kids uh, that she's teaching, they find out about uh, uh, that one of her roommates. And she and her roommate, were they were only roommates one year and they weren't particularly good friends. Um, but they find out that, that her roommate was uh, this uh, murdered girl and it's, and it's a you know this a major legend uh, at this school mm -hmm. and so they're the ones that kind of inspire her in a way uh to to start to start looking at this um at the case again um and as kathy said uh there there is a man who's in jail uh he was convicted and um particularly problematically he confessed uh we're going to try not to give um, too much well you find out a lot of you find out like who was convicted very early on mm -hmm. uh, and he happens to be one of the only if not the only black staff member uh, at this school at the time uh, so there are a lot of interesting elements um, um, mm -hmm. like that mm -hmm. um, yes yeah I mean the podcasting yeah. aspect in particular yep. I think is something um, that drew me in at least because the way she's questioning everything around her um, and certainly podcasts are a huge thing now, and she's definitely delving into um, the ethics of, I think, our modern obsession with true crime stories, most, or maybe not most, but many of which have to do with violence against women. Um, so that aspect of it, I think, is really compelling. Um, and she, she just does such a great job of getting the nuances of um, I think everyone's perspectives of that at that time, um, yeah. because there's so many different characters at play here and so many possibilities. Right. One of yeah. Um, one of the things they uh, they talk about as they're as they, as they start looking into the case, uh, there's a there is a um, a video clip uh, from the night that uh, her name is. Thalia, I believe is how it's pronounced. Thalia or Thalia? That's true. Okay, well, we can Thalia. quibble about it. <laughs> T-H-A-L-A. In, in any case, uh, there, was, uh, they were, uh, there was a production of Camelot, uh, and, and, yes. and, and uh, she was, yeah. and there's some video from, from that night, and mm -hmm. you can see her, uh, The I'm going to say Thalia, okay? Okay, uh, I might say Thalia. <laughs> pretty sure Thalia. Okay. Anyway. Um, you can see her saying something to somebody off stage, which is mm -hmm. a, a, an mm -hmm. important little detail. And mm -hmm. then, and then later that night, uh, there's a big um, um, illegal drinking party off off campus, mm -hmm. and there's a lot of pictures of uh, the kids who are there, uh, but she's not there. Um, and so mm -hmm. these are all sort of clues to, uh, yeah. to to what happened. Right. And they're revealed fairly early on. Right. Um, I think, yeah, most of the clues you get sort of at the beginning, but then they sort of spin in these directions that you can't really predict, right. which is sort of like life, I suppose. Right. Where, yeah. Especially, um, yeah, just reconstructing the events and the reimagining of everything. Right. And yeah. Um, and then one of the, uh, as, as Kathy and I were talking about the book earlier, um, one of the things that's that we both like about it is that it happens at a, at a school, at a, at a boarding school. Mm -hmm. But there's just something about novels that take place either on a, on a campus or at a boarding school that um, where you've got like power dynamics and politics and and, yeah. and and the relationships between the students and among the students and between students and teachers there's just it's just such ripe material uh for plotting yeah, yeah. and character i think just having any environment that is so you know contained and closed off especially during a period like high school where there's so much happening <laughs> internally and externally um and sort of figuring out who you are in the world which i think is also a major theme of the book it's the narrator reflecting on her own time at that school right. um and her own developing sense of identity um and how that changes obviously as you go through the decades um but what that means for how you approach you know things that happen to you um things that might have seemed fine or a set right. way in the past but 
um, certainly are more fluid than you might think. Um, so boarding schools, yeah. yes. <laughs> yeah, like, like Harry Potter. <laughs> It's just like Harry Potter, if yeah. Like, if you like Harry Potter, <laughs> you'll you know. you'll love this. Um, um, it actually it reminded me um, a little bit of this book called *The Secret Place* by Tana French that I loved. It was the first Tana French that I read, and I think um, I was reading an interview with Rebecca, and she said that you know Tana French was certainly one of her inspirations. So um, yeah. I think if you like Tana French, you certainly um should read this just ta the way Tana French uses language and obviously her expert plotting as well but um I think there's similar aspects there um so <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. the, another thing that uh was great about the book is that um you know the the, the narration is uh it, it goes back and forth in time obviously from the present when she's there teaching the kids and in the past when the, uh, when she was a senior at this school. But, but she um, sprinkles in these chapters um, where each chapter is a person's name. And it is a person that she's thinking about in terms of whether or not they could have done the crime. And, and she is specifically, as she's talking about this person, she's speaking to a former teacher because she's using the word you mm -hmm. um and, and you she, don't know exactly who she's talking to at right. first i mean it's revealed here right but, uh, yeah and it's it's so you know the guy who's actually convicted she's she mm -hmm. she talks about him she talks about herself she thinks could i have done this you know yeah it, it kind of because she starts rethinking everything and it's kind of a long time ago yeah um and then and other students um yeah um trying to i don't remember who, who all but it's, you know there's like seven or eight different characters yeah. that that she is she's uh thinking about what was their relationship to the to to the girl and could they have done it you know um mm -hmm. it's just an interesting device that she uses mm -hmm. yeah i mean i think that's sort of what makes the book so effective too are those certain ways she chooses to frame things um yeah i really love that yeah. that part um and obviously you don't know why she's talk talking to this teacher and I think that was something that was really um interesting I don't want to say too much more about yeah. the teacher but um certainly I mean I think we've all had those teachers in our lives so who have like loomed really large for us for whatever reason um not which, necessarily that there was a murder that took right. place at your school and you're like but rethinking which, everything Right, and which yeah. brings up another theme, I guess, uh, uh, <laughs> about like who ha teachers have the power. Mm -hmm. uh, oh yeah, it's all about power and balance. balance, 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 balance <laughs> you know. Yeah, book very much about power and balances. Um, you know, yeah, between adults and students and men and women right. and in various contexts, um, which I think is obviously very relevant to, you know whatever reckonings we're going through today with that. Um, but, you know, I think she handles it yeah. pretty deftly. Yeah. And the, even, the, you know, the, of course the police had power, but they kind of, but uh, the way they handled the case uh, it, uh, seem, seems like it may have been improper because they, mm -hmm. didn't, they didn't start talking to the kids until days later, Yeah, yeah. which, which mm -hmm. gave the kids a chance to get their story straight. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it is about, I think, institutions in that way, too. So, um, you know, schools and certainly prisons um, and the justice system and who that benefits. Um, there's a whole lot packed into this book. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but I think at its core is that plot, which is just, it makes you. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. I yeah. I don't think we gave anything away. I hope we did it. I know. Yeah. Sometimes with mysteries, it's hard. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and by the way, <laughs> you we, get so excited. We, there's definitely this mystery element to it. But, yeah. But it's, but I, I'm mostly a fiction reader. And I, yeah. I, I read this book as a work of fiction with a really cool um, yeah. crime element to it. Oh. So, and yeah. I think it was the mystery that sort of hooked me at first. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. It's like, yeah. It's great. Yeah. You should read Two it. Two thumbs up. Rebecca uh, McKay's yeah. awesome. 
Was, yeah. there, was there anything else on our list that we covered all? I think we, yeah. No, I think we got it all. Okay. Um, so again, that is I Have Some Questions for You by Rebecca Mackay. Pick it up. Um, I'm going to, uh, uh, Kathy and I are going to each talk about um, uh, one book uh, on our own. And I want to talk to you about uh, the new book from uh, Donald Ryan. It's called The Queen of Dirt Island. Um, I'm a big fan of, of this writer. He's won many awards. He's Irish. Um, he wrote two, I've read, I think, at least three other books of his. Uh, Strange Flowers is in paperback, and I really like this book. And uh, and then this book, All We Shall Know, uh, I really loved this book. And I would talk about each of those, but uh, I don't have time for that. The Queen of Dirt Island um, takes place in Ireland, and it is about four generations of, uh, of, of women in a family. There are four women. Um, it's a little bit of a spoiler, but anyway, it says it right in the it says it right in the, in the jacket flap. Four generations of, of women, and um, and on the he, he talk about uh, kind of odd literary devices. I don't know what you would call this, but every uh, every chapter in this book is basically the same length. They're all about. Sorry, I don't know if this is working. They're all about a page and a half long. Every single chapter is that long. And uh, at first I kind of thought, well, that's kind of a weird little trick. I don't, I mean, it kind of, in fact, it kind of bothered me. It's like, why, what's the point of that? And at some point you just get into the rhythm of it. Um, and uh, each very short chapter is like a little story unto itself that um, that moves the, the big story along and in the on the very very first page the very first sentence is she was born okay so she is um Saoirse, uh and, and she's pretty much the main character and so she's a baby uh when the book starts and then this this is this can't be a spoiler because it happens on the second page so i'm going to tell you um she comes home three days old her her, her mother and dad are happy as they can be. Her dad drives off to work and he dies in a car accident. That happens on page two. Um, and so uh, Saoirse and her mother, Eileen, are, are left alone. And then uh, they become very close to the, um, her, her dead father's mother. And I can't remember her name, but they call her Nana. Um, so we start out with these three women, two women and a baby. Um, and, uh, and it's just, um, it's just the most beautiful, um, book about family relationships that, that I think may, maybe I've, I've ever read. And these women, particularly Eileen and Nana, um, I mean, they're at each other's throats just constantly. They're just yelling at each other and they're driving each other crazy. And then, but there, there's never a question about, um, about the bond that's there, and and the and the author uh, Ryan just he uh, conveys that so so well, um, and it is the voice, um, his voice is just am amazing. Uh, I found myself, and I wasn't reading the book out loud to myself, but I was like saying it out loud in my head as I read it because it's just uh, the language is just incredible. And I will I'm going to quote one review. Um, from the Wall Street Journal, and it doesn't say who it is, but I, I, it must be a woman, because the quote is, as for Ryan's treatment of Saoirse, I do not know of another male writer who has so perfectly captured the experiences and thoughts of a woman as he has. And I mean, what do I know? But I mean, it, that does, I think that, that's really accurate. Um, this, some of the little chapters are, the, are uh, hilarious, and some of them, um, well, one of them just sucked the air out of my lungs. I could truly, I could not breathe. I almost cried um, one time. Um, and uh, there's an, uh, he uses uh, profanities uh, really effectively. Um, there, there is one, one chapter in here, um, and I won't tell you what it's about, it's just, except that Saoirse, who is a teenager at this point, does something that makes your mother really mad. Uh, and if it were, uh, I mean, if this were a play, David Mamet 
could have written it, if you, if you know what I mean. It is, I mean, it, it's, it, it's a good uh, uh, example of what not to say to your kid when they, when they mess up. And it's the most, it's the funniest thing I've ever read in my life. Um, so uh, I just, I, I, I can't uh, recommend it highly enough. It just came out a couple of months ago, uh, The Queen of Dirt Island. And you should also read this book. Okay. Um, so the book that I'm going to talk about uh, comes out, it's actually not out yet. It comes out May 16. Um, but I, I really loved it. This was, um, I guess I did read the, Rebe the Rebecca Mackay this year. So this is my other favorite book of the year. Um, the Guest by Emma Klein, which you might remember she wrote a really big book called The Girls a few years back um, that got a lot of press. But the guest uh, is about a young woman named Alex. She is in the Hamptons currently. Um, she is staying with her much older boyfriend, Simon. Um, you don't know exactly how they met at first, but she's just kind of going through the motions. Um, she It's quickly revealed that uh, she has done something in New York City that makes it impossible for her to return to uh, her former place of residence um, involving another man named Dom, um, who uh, may or may not be threatening to track her down. Uh, so you know that she's gotten into um, a bit of a mess and she may not be completely honest <laughs> about who she is. Uh, I, I tend to gravitate towards books that have um, somewhat troubled young women, but I think what makes Emma Klein's writing so good is that it's so taut and sharp that this book really reads like a thriller. Um, it, it's really just a girl who's uh, staying with her boyfriend again. Uh, he does eventually kick her out. So uh he throws this huge Labor Day party every year. So she's thinking she has about a week until that party. She just has to make it through the week in the Hamptons um, any way she can and then go to the party and somehow all will be forgiven. Uh, he's just going to magically, I guess, welcome her back with open arms. So she is trying to hustle her way through that week. She um, falls in with various sorts of people uh, using various stories and various uh, aliases. She um, has this knack, I think, for, um, I don't know, magical thinking almost that I think fear can sometimes produce. You're trying to get yourself out of your situation and um, you have to do it by any means necessary. So um, and the, the, the character is just so well drawn, um, so clearly drawn. I think Emma Klein is the best writer today who writes about um, class and wealth, especially because, well, you're just gonna have to read the book, but um, it's great. The Guest by Emma Klein. Did you say when it comes out? May 16th, again. So look for it in May. Only one month away. <laughs> so there. Okay. <laughs> Dan, Kathy, that was wonderful. Thank you both so much. <laughs> uh, you've catapulted all of those books up the my reading list. Um, really appreciate it. Yes, that was amazing. Yeah. I loved Thank Maeve's you. list. Yeah. I feel like I have great fun. So much to read now. Um, Got a good partner. <laughs> so audience, you can find all of these books at northshire.com. The um, blog post that uh, David has posted lists all of them for your shopping convenience. And that was also in your confirmation email when you signed up for uh, uh, for today's event, the email that had the Zoom link in it. Um, you can check out future events there. You can sign up to join us at Booktopia, which is coming up uh, sooner than we all think, just a month away. Um, so if you can get yourself to Manchester, Vermont for that weekend, uh, it's a great one. Um, and hopefully we'll see you all there. Thanks so much, everyone. Have a great night. Thank you.